Hello, my friends. Welcome back to MTD CNC. We are at SHOT Show today. I'm with my buddy Matt Evans at Fifth Access Work Holding. You might see some people walk through. We've tried to bring the camera close enough to you so we don't have to worry about that. But with that being said, I've already seen two or three people walk through before we started this interview. So, wanted to give you a heads up. SHOT Show, an amazing show, Fifth Access Work Holding, amazing products. So we're going to get right into it and talk Fifth Access Work Holding specifically for guns. Then we're going to get into the bread and butter of the product and then we have something new to show you, which is kind of exciting as well, especially for our European audience out there, because I know we want to grow that far. So, Matt, let's talk SHOT Show, Fifth Access, and gun manufacturing. Sure, sure. Yeah, we're uh, really happy to be here at SHOT Show. We've got a, a couple key products. We've got a few products that we build specifically for the firearms industry. So, Picatinny dovetails, uh, anybody holding a Picatinny rail, very popular item that we show. Uh, as well as our, our self-centering vices. So uh, anybody machining billet, um, even some castings and forgings, we use our self-centering vices. So um, we have a lot of great customers here, so it's awesome to see everyone at SHOT Show. And um, yeah, couldn't, couldn't be happier to be here, so. I'm gonna interrupt real quick because I want Matt to talk a little bit about the significance of what a self-centering vice does. Now, back in the younger days, older days, however you wanna call it, when I was a, a, a much younger machinist, I had my typical vice where I twisted the front end and the front pushed to the back and that was how I locked my vice down. Now, knowing fifth axis, I'm not gonna give away any secrets. I'm gonna let Matt do that. But sure. Matt, what are the great significant purposes of a self-centering vice? Sure, sure. So the original design with the self-centering was built around five axis machining, right? Four and five axis was you want to be machining on center line. So you've got a left and right-handed lead screw. They're pulling the jaws to center. So you have a nice repeatable, um, you know, surface to work off of and that really has expanded now to multi-axis stuff, so not just five axis, three axis, four axis, five axis, the idea being small, compact footprint, highly repeatable, and um, that's, that's what you're getting out of a self-setting, is really the accuracy and repeatability. Now it's turned into a lot of um, you know, small footprint, automation, it's, there's more benefits than just uh, the self-centering axis. So. Well, this wasn't even part of the plan, but I got to dive into it just a little bit, and I don't want to spend too much time on it, but you mentioned they originally started with Fifth Axis work, uh, Manufacturing, which is yep. kind of where you got the name, and 100%. also, it was originally invented because the owners of the company didn't have a work holding that they thought was going to work yep. best for all the Five Axis Manufacturing that was happening. Can we talk just 30 yep. seconds or so about that? Absolutely, yeah. So, when Chris and Steve started the company, they had looked at a lot of um, really some European options that were available for multi-axis machining, and there just wasn't much on the market, and there wasn't anything that they really felt was a good fit for our shop. So they started making the dovetail fixtures, and then we started getting into vices, and now we've got quick change, and uh, our rock lock system and the product lines expanded from there quickly. So. Yeah, and continues to expand. I want to talk a little bit about the bread and butter products we have sitting in front of us right now, the ones that sell the most. But I'm also really happy that we talked about all the people walking in front of the camera yeah, because yeah. it's, it's happened. Keep coming. It's happened three or four times already. So let's talk about some of the products you have right here. I heard you talking with a customer earlier saying these are the ones that we yeah. go to. We have certain sizes. We have certain overall dimensions. It's happened again right on yeah. cue. And but but this is where we really thrive yeah. in the industry. Let's yeah, talk exactly. about these. Yeah, so we've got two self-centering vices on the table. This is a three inch by four inch and a five inch by six inch. Those are the two most popular sizes. So the largest vice we do is five by 10 inch, uh, but our bread and butter is really this five by six and three by four. So 75 millimeters by 100 millimeters or 125 millimeters by 150. That's like kind of our world. That's where we do really, really well. Um, and those are the two most popular sizes that we have. You know, depending on your part size and your mill size, that's really our bread and butter. So. And it's been around as long as I can remember. I yeah. see them everywhere all the time. You guys have done a wonderful job at branding because every single social media I post, I see, I see the gold, I see the logo. You've done We're a fantastic job yeah. at that. Um, 
there is an audience out there uh, because we're a global channel sure. and you're sure. a global company yeah. as well. So yeah. I want to bring this up a yeah, little bit. Absolutely. When we talk about your rock lock bases, sure. Sure. there are still companies out there that are throwing people at machines when it comes to three axis yep. machining instead of throwing some form of automation. Sure. I know you've recently sure. gotten into pneumatic as yeah. well, yeah. but even before pneumatic, mm -hmm. there is a great uh, acceleration of process when we can have one job ready to go and yeah. gives us three or four seconds just to switch the new one in. So let's talk about rock lock real quick quick and with sure. the new innovations of the pneumatics that you've yeah. introduced. Yeah, sure. So we have on the table here our 52 millimeter and our 96 millimeter rock lock system. So when we talk about that, we're referring to basically the pull stud uh, spacing on both of the systems. So depending on the size of your machine, you've got those two options. But the beauty of the system is once you get the rock lock base on the machine, uh, we've got a master gauge pallet that allows you to dial it in. Once you torque that down, all of your fixturing can quickly change off that rock lock base, two to three tenths repeatability. And like you said, we've got a ton of customers that we can call it, you know, manual, you know, semi-automation, if you will, right? Like this, this picture right here, where we've got it on a fourth axis, if we've got eight parts, we can load a tombstone offline, have one running, and then kind of hot swap those. So for small shops, it's amazing. If they only have a few employees, it keeps that machine running. We had a customer that just bought a setup for his fourth axis, and he's like, I've never gone through parts faster than I have with your double vices in the rock lock system. So yeah, it doesn't need to be full automation with robots and train cars. It'd be very, very simple, uh, but the advantages are massive, so. I think that's important to understand because in some parts of the world, we are 100% investing in the cobots, Always. the robots, the yeah. pallet chains, the yeah. bar feed, but in other parts of the world, cost of a, a manufacturing engineer is somewhat inexpensive sure. and we still have tons of them and so the manual version is Exactly. And then I bring that up because in my head, if I have a three axis machine, there's no reason why I don't have at minimum a setup like this exactly. to a setup like this right. to even something that's pneumatic if I need sure. it to be. Or, uh, you know, some of the other operations that go on in a three axis machine that allow me to somewhat automate. I would just, it just makes sense, right? 100%. 100%. And the, the one thing we're really trying to do different is we're making and designing all of our uh, you know, manual work holding and our automation in line together. So parts and products can be moved in a manual operation and then moved to automation and vice versa. So that's one thing we're trying to do differently because different things come up every day. So you want flexibility. Also, if you invest in a lot of tooling and you're like, okay, we're running it manually, down the line we want to get automation, you don't have to buy all that tooling again. You want to be able to bring that with you and then be able to bring it back if you have a hot job and you don't, you know, you just need to throw it on the mill. Um, so that's what we're really trying to focus on. So we're excited about that. So compatibility with all the different systems, the way we set our chuck up. If you use our manual rock lock and then you buy a pneumatic, all your top tooling is gonna be very similar. So the actuation is similar. You don't have a big changeover of tooling, which is super cool, so. I have a question for you, Matt, and I think yeah. there's a piece of the audience out there right now, uh, and I feel like I should ask this question because it's important. Sure. Now, as great as fifth access work holding is, you're not the only work holding out there. No. So if I'm investing in rock lock, and yeah. if I'm investing in the ability to do these quick change processes within microns of each yep. other, yep. do I also need to reinvest all of my work holding or can I invest in your rock lock and then also in the future invest in the fifth access work holding? Exactly, great question. So that was the big thing that we looked at when we designed the system was like, okay, Every shop we know, including our own, is gonna have existing fixtures. Like, we don't wanna to have to reinvent the wheel. So it's really nice. A lot of customers will just get a rock lock base. You can get some of our pull studs. You can integrate, you can build your own fixtures. We're very open source. So we'll give you models, we'll give you drawings. We want everything to be accessible. So the answer is, uh, it's really, really simple to integrate and you don't have to get rid of any of your existing fixtures. And we're also very open source with competitive systems. We want everything to work together. We don't make everything in the world, so um, we want to give people options. So that's, that's kind of what makes us unique. Well, the world probably knows, or at least anyone who's ever been on Instagram knows where to find you. Yes. But yeah. I'd like to give your website anyway, just in case somebody wants to go direct to your website. And I'd also like you to elaborate on the website because the last time I played on there, yeah. I could actually design and develop my whole work holding setup based on 
a multitude of machines. So I think if you can talk about that a little bit for the audience as well, that even simplifies more the process of, I know I need to make an investment and you've just made it simpler. Yes, yeah, that's the goal. So fifthaxis.com, 5thaxis.com is the website. Uh, like Tony said, we have a 3D configuration tool on the website that's super cool. So we're, we're big, we 3D model everything and we make it all available. So on that tool, which is constantly uh, updated, we're trying to keep as many machines and we know different international brands, we're trying to add a few a month. So, so keep, you know, keep watching it if your brand's not on there, but you can pick your make and model and configure the work holding just as you like it and download it in 60 native formats and bring it right into your CAD system. And uh, so that's gonna be evolving and we're gonna keep adding to it. So it's a cool little tool. It should be easy. Like it shouldn't be that complicated. Everything's available. We're trying to make it seamless. I remember a few years ago when this guy and I were hanging out together a little bit more in the factory a lot more and I didn't start running around the world with MTD quite as much. And I remember when this was first being yeah, implemented yeah, and you and I yeah. looked at each other and we're like, this is brilliant. This is, this is exactly what everybody needs, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, at the end of the day, having your you know, tools, your holders, your machine, everything modeled, available now with some of the softwares, you know, on the go, anywhere, it's all cloud-based. It's just the way it should be. So um, we're gonna keep pushing that and pushing other, you know, of our friends and uh, associates to have, make their models available too. And if we're gonna say hi to friends, let's just say hi to Martin Trunyan real quick. Yeah, we're already exactly. doing it, we're already doing yeah. it. Now, Matt, you and I can talk forever. We both sure. know this. Know. Uh, we're both pretty animated when it comes yeah. to conversation yeah. as well. But let's get to that surprise that we wanted to share the yeah. audience, which is some of your yeah. new products that you're releasing where in the US it's starting to get noticed, but I think in Europe there's gonna be a yeah. really big deal. So let's talk about what you're making and what you have sure. on the table here. Sure, so a passion project of uh, Chris and Steve, the co-owners, has always been mountain biking. That's actually how they really ended up meeting. And uh, we've been looking for an opportunity to introduce our own line of mountain bike components. And really, I should say, cycling components because we're starting with mountain bike but we're working on road gravel some dedicated road you'll be seeing more stuff from us um, but we've got a the brand is five dev so it's our development group but we've got uh, cranks pedals stems and a lot more stuff on the way so we're super excited about it it allows us to do it's kind of a you know a passion freedom project if you will and um we're really trying to push the envelope of what we can do with design and strength and really the looks of everything. So we're excited. So you'll see more stuff from 5Dev coming soon. And when it comes to researching more about it, is it the same website? Is it a different website? Different Where website. can I find it? Yeah, so 5Dev.com, so 5Dev.com. And we'll make a connection to all the sites pretty soon. But yeah, 5Dev's the brand, and it's growing pretty quickly. And yeah, you'll be seeing more of it. So we're really excited about it. Yeah, and very cool. And also, Steve, just let me say thank you for letting me borrow your mountain bike the last time <laughs> I was out in California so I could get some exercise. What a fun way to close, Matt. You are always a pleasure. Yeah. It's always a pleasure to always see you. To see you, man. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for the time. And thank you all for watching. I hope this has been helpful.